assalamu alaikum everybody welcome back to my channel rapid revision uh, the question that i am going to solve today is from october november 2024 paper 2 variant 3 this is question number 4 this is basically on depreciation and disposals and the question here says a company has a fleet of delivery vehicles so fleet of delivery vehicles means that they have a group of delivery vehicles um, information from their statement statement of financial position at 31st December 2022 shows that delivery vehicle originally cost 440,000 so all the delivery vehicles the purchase price for all the delivery vehicles that uh, we have in our business uh, is 440,000 with an accumulated depreciation of 270,000 which means that the total depreciation at the start of the year which we have uh, start of year 2023 which means that at 31st December 2022 whatever values we have as our balances in the statement of financial position will be the opening balances on 1st January 2023. So on 1st January 2023 the cost of uh, vehicles will be 440,000 and the total depreciation at the start of the year will be 270,000. So, um, so basically uh, we have already charged uh, $270,000 of depreciation in the past on these vehicles that we have uh, then they are saying the business purchased two additional vehicles costing a total of 70,000 on 1st April 2023 on credit from L autos so this is something that we have purchased during the year so this is the addition in the delivery vehicles then they are saying on 30th November 2023 the business sold one of its vehicles the vehicle had originally cost 28,000 with an accumulated depreciation of 16,800 so they are selling one delivery vehicle uh, which uh, had which had costed them 28,000 and the total depreciation that they have already charged on it uh, is 16,800. The vehicle was sold for 10,500 to local to a local garage uh, who paid by bank transfer. Uh, then they are saying the business provides uh, for depreciation using the straight line method at the rate of 20% per annum. A full year's depreciation is charged in the year of purchase, no depreciation is charged in the year, year of disposal. So we are not going to depreciate um, the asset which we have sold. Uh, so basically we have sold this asset, right, which uh, costed us 28,000. So we are not going to depreciate that. So uh, the total cost of delivery vehicles at the start of the year was 440,000. From this, we have sold uh, a delivery vehicle which costed us 28,000. So that means we are left with a delivery vehicles cost 412,000. So at the end of the year, so at the end of 31st, basically the end of year, that is uh, on 31st December 2023, uh, we will have cost of remaining delivery vehicles that is 412,000. Uh, remaining means that um, from the 440,000 uh, cost of delivery vehicles we have sold something which costed us 28,000 uh, a delivery vehicle which costed us 28,000 so this is sold we are not going to depreciate this but we are going to depreciate the remaining delivery vehicles because we still have them we are still using them so you do 412,000 multiplied by 20 percent which will uh, get you an answer for this which will be 82,400 this is the uh, depreciation for delivery vehicles for the current year that is year 2023 uh, basically the remaining delivery vehicles uh, which are the old ones which we already have so for the new delivery vehicle that is the new two delivery vehicles that we have we, that we have bought from L autos uh, costed us 70,000 and you multiply this again by 20% so you will get a value of 14,000 so that means we have a depreciation of old motor vehicles which we will charge in the current year will be 82,400 plus depreciation of the new delivery vehicle that will be 14,000 which we will charge in the current year that is 14,000 and they have said full year's depreciation in the year of purchase. So 14,000 plus 82,400 will give us 96,400 which is the uh, current year's depreciation expense. So 2023 depreciation expense will be uh, 82,400 plus 14,000 and this is what we will charge, charge in the income statement so this is going to be an income statement expense for depreciation of delivery vehicles in the next part they are saying prepare the company's ledger accounts for the delivery vehicles provision for depreciation and disposal of delivery vehicles for the year ended 31st december 2023 balance the account and bring down the balances on 1st january 2024 so i'll write here 1st january 2023 so on 1st January 20, 2023, the balance brought down will be 
for 40,000. Because the cost of assets at the start of the year, the cost of delivery vehicles at the start of the year was 440,000. And basically it was the year end balance of 31st December 2023, which will which becomes my opening balance on 1st January 2023. Then I will write here 1st April 2023 and on 1st April 2023 we are purchasing two delivery vehicles from L Autos and they uh, have costed us 70,000 so when we are purchasing two delivery vehicles from L Autos from on credit so L Autos basically becomes my other payable so why do I call L Autos my other payable because it's like I'm going to uh, repay them this amount in the future I need to I need to pay them this amount in the future and the double entry for this will be delivery vehicles account debit l autos account credit so l autos is my other payable it's not my trade payable so point to be noted here is that it's not my trade payable why why because uh, trade payables are uh, those people or organizations from uh, from whom the business buys goods on credit so since we are buying delivery vehicles on credit from l autos so L autos is my other payable. It's not my uh, trade payable. So uh, it's my liability. So liability account because since um, there is a rule in accounting, debit what comes in the business. So you need to debit the delivery vehicles account uh, because uh, delivery vehicles are coming into the business. And uh, there is another rule that uh, debit the receiver, credit the giver. So the giver of uh, delivery vehicles in this case is L Auto. So we'll credit the L Auto's account and we need to debit the delivery vehicles account. And one more thing, assets increase on the debit side, decrease on the credit side. So since we are se also selling uh, one delivery vehicle, which costed us uh, 28,000 on 30th November, 2023, we are selling this a non current asset that is delivery vehicle and I'm going to write here disposal and this is going to be 28,000 so you guys need to know that this is a cost account so delivery vehicles uh, non current asset account is a cost account which means all the values in the non current asset account must be the cost of original cost of the non current asset so 440,000 was the original purchase price of delivery vehicles uh, of this business 70,000 is also the original purchase price of the new delivery vehicles and since um, all the values are cost so disposal value should also be the cost of that asset which you have disposed of so now we'll actually calculate a balance carried down here so I'll write here 31st December 2023 I'll write here balance carried down now this is the cost of delivery vehicles at the end of the year um, so this will this this is going to be uh, 482,000 so how did I work this out? I did 440,000. So basically I added both the values on the debit side. 440,000 plus 70,000 minus 28,000 which gave me the remaining, uh, rem the, the, the cost of delivery vehicles at the end of the year. Now this account will balance at 510,000 on both sides. The total of this account is 510,000 and this balance carried down will become my balance brought down. And this is going to be 482,000. I'll write here 1st January 2024. So yes, that's it for delivery vehicles cost account for provision for depreciation. Again, provision is a contra asset and contra assets have uh, opposite rules of assets. So like for the asset, assets increase on the debit side, decrease on the credit side. Provision for depreciation increases on the credit side, decreases on the debit side. Also, they have a balance brought down on the credit side. So we'll start with the balance brought down here which is given in the question on 1st January 2023 the balance brought down that is the total accumulated depreciation basically the total depreciation at the start of the year is 270,000 now in the current year since I calculated this in the first part income statement value will come here and this is going to be 96,400 which is the total depreciation of the current year I'll write here 31st December 2023 because income statement is always prepared on the last day of the year um, last year of the financial year so the financial year is from uh, in this question is 1st January 2023 to 31st December 2023 here I'll write disposal and this is going to be the total depreciation on that asset asset which we have disposed of so the total depreciation on that asset which we have disposed of uh, it's it's given right here in the question 
uh, with an accumulated depreciation of 16,800. So the cost of that asset which we have sold was uh, 28,000, but the accumulated depreciation of this asset was 16,800. And notice, in the depreciation account, all the values are depreciation. So in the cost account, all the values were cost. In the depreciation account, all the values are depreciation. And balance brought down is basically total depreciation at the start of the year. Income statement is the current year's depreciation. So by, by charging more depreciation in the income statement, you basically are increasing depreciation. Um, and uh, disposal is going to be the total depreciation that we have charged on that asset which we have disposed of. But we need to basically remove this from our books. That is why we are debiting the provision for depreciation account here. And I'll write here 30th November because we have sold this asset on 30th November 2023. Now the balance carried down in this case will be, uh, this will be on 31st December 2023. And the balance carried down will be 349,600, which is going to be my total accumulated depreciation at the end of 23, 2023. And this total of this account will be 366,400 on both sides. 366,400 and this balance carried down will become my balance brought down and I'll write here 349,600 and this is going to be 1st January 2024. So that's it for provision for depreciation of delivery vehicles account. Now, now the last T account that I need to prepare here will be the disposal account. So if you look at uh, disposal in the delivery vehicles account is coming on the credit side so delivery vehicles account has been credited. So I need to debit the disposals account now here. So I will write here delivery vehicles. So notice that in the delivery vehicles account, I have written disposal on the credit side. So in the disposal of delivery vehicles account, I'll write dispo uh, delivery vehicles on the debit side. I'll write here 28,000. This will be 30th November 2023. And then uh, if you look at this, so in the provision for depreciation of delivery vehicles account, I have written disposal on the debit side. That means I have debited the provision for depreciation of delivery vehicles account and I've written disposals in the de disposal in the details. So in the disposal account, I need to uh, credit the disposal account. I'll write here provision for depreciation. So one account is debited and one account is credited. So in this case, provision for depreciation is debited. So you need to credit the disposal account in this case. And this is going to also be 30th November 2023. Also, when we are selling this asset, they have said in the question that this vehicle, the vehicle was sold for 10,500 to a local garage who paid by bank transfer. That means bank is debited and uh, disposal account needs to be credited. So since bank is debited, money is coming in the business. So I need to debit bank. So in the in the bank account in the cash book, basically I'll write disposal in the details. So in the disposal of delivery vehicles account, I'm going to write bank here and this is going to be 10,500. Now this account will not balance of course, because there is a loss on disposal in this case. So 28,000 was my cost of uh, delivery vehicle and um, the total depreciation that we had charged on this delivery vehicle was 16,800. So 28,000 minus 16,800 was 11,200, which was my net book value, 11,200. However, I have received 10,500 as my uh, selling price of this particular delivery vehicle. That means uh, net book value we expected 11,200 which is the value of our non-current asset that is our estimation of the value of our non-current asset however we sold it for 10,500 only so that means now there will be an income statement value which will be 700 that is a loss on disposal here in this case because what I expected uh, was 11,200 however I received 10,500 only so there is this difference to 11,200 minus 10,500 will give you 700 here and this will be 31st December 2023 which means there is a loss on disposal. Now I am going to total this on both sides 28,000 on both sides. Now that is it for all these 3T accounts uh, and then they have given you a question basically it's based on theory. So I've already written this answer for you. Uh, the question here says, after talking to his accountant, the owner of the company is considering changing the method of depreciation for his delivery vehicles to reducing balance method, but maintaining the rate of depreciation 
at 20%. So actually, this is not allowed in accounting. You can't change the accounting policies or methods um, whenever you want to. You need to be consistent with that because there is a consistency concept in accounting which says that accounting policies and methods should be consistently used from one year to the next so that you know profits are comparable from one year to the next. Uh, but then they're saying advise the owner of the company whether he should pursue this course of action, justify your answer by providing two advantages and two disadvantages of changing the method of depreciation to reducing balance method. So the point here is that reducing balance method is a good method of depreciation for delivery vehicles. So assets like delivery vehicles and machinery, they are super efficient and in the earlier years and in the later years, their efficiency goes down and there's a repair cost that is also incurred in the later years. So in the early years, earlier, early, in the early years of usage, uh, these assets like delivery vehicles and machinery are super efficient. So that means you don't have any repairs expense in the early years, but you have repairs expense in the later years. Also, you have um, depreciation in the later years. But uh, what reducing balance method does is that they have a, a bigger values, like you have bigger values of depreciation in the early years where there is no repair cost. And in the later years, you have smaller values for depreciation, but there is a repair cost. So that is how you balance the expense here. Uh, but there, uh, what I have written here is, uh, if the owner of the company changes the method to reducing balance, uh, the estimate loss and the value will be more accurate as delivery vehicles are the kind of asset which give greater benefits to the business in the early years because they are more efficient in the earlier years. However, in the later years, the depreciation expense is a lower amount and repairs is also an expense. So there's a lower depreciation plus there's a repairs expense as well in the later years. If they use RBM, that is reducing balance method, the net book value will be more close to market value. So it is true because RBM is a more appropriate method for, for assets like delivery vehicles and um, machinery. However, this action will go against the consistency principle of accounting which says that accounting policies should be consistently used from one year to the next. Also, changing the methods of depreciation distorts profits, of course, because, uh, because now profits are not comparable anymore. Uh, also, comparisons between years becomes difficult. Comparisons in, in, in terms of profits. So, basically, profits are not comparable anymore. Uh, therefore, uh, therefore, the owner should not change the method, method of depreciation. This is my uh, suggestion and also basically this suggestion is what you should also give because you can't give the recommendation that you should change the method of depreciation because consistency principle in accounting is a very important principle which the business needs to follow and if they change the method of depreciation, so that will go against the consistency principle of accounting. So that is it for this question. Thank you so much for watching. Hope this helps you guys.